soaring from New York to London in less than two hours. Sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie, right? But this incredible feat was accomplished by the SR-71 Blackbird, a jet that remains the fastest manned aircraft ever built. Today on The Tech Insider, we're diving into the fascinating story of how the SR-71 Blackbird shattered speed records and completed the transatlantic flight from New York to London in just one hour and 54 minutes. Stealthy Speedster In the 1950s, during the Cold War, the Central Intelligence Agency used U-2 spy planes to watch the Soviet Union's growing nuclear power. The U-2 flew very high to avoid enemy attacks, but was still vulnerable to missiles. In 1960, a U-2 was shot down, and its pilot, Gary Powers, was captured, which caused major trouble between the United States and the Soviet Union. Another U-2 was shot down during the Cuban Missile Crisis, and five Taiwanese U-2s were also shot down over China. Realizing that flying high wasn't enough, engineers started working on a new plane in 1957. Lockheed Skunk Works created the A-12, also called Archangel, which first flew in 1962. They built 15 A-12s, which flew 29 missions over North Korea and Vietnam during Operation Black Shield, though six were lost in accidents. The A-12 collected valuable information, helping the CIA find North Vietnamese air defenses and locate the USS Pueblo after North Korea captured it. Despite plans for other versions, only the Air Force's SR-71 was put into service. The SR-71 could fly faster than Mach 3, with a confirmed record of Mach 3.3 and a claimed Mach 3.5 reached by pilot Brian Schull in 1986. Unlike Soviet MiG-25 and MiG-31 fighters, which could only briefly reach Mach 3, the SR-71 could fly at Mach 3 for 90 minutes before needing to refuel. By the time a missile system locked onto the SR-71, the Blackbird was already out of its range. Lockheed didn't just rely on speed to avoid missiles. The Blackbird was the first plane designed to be less visible to radar. Its sharp edges, called Chinese, were coated with special radar-absorbing paint to help avoid detection. The Chinese also provided extra lift and made the plane more stable. However, the Blackbird wasn't a stealth plane by today's standards. It had a large radar cross-section of 10 square meters, which Soviet radar could detect. The plane also produced huge heat exhaust plumes from its engines, which showed up on radar. To counter this, the Blackbird was equipped with a radar jammer and other electronic systems to confuse enemy missiles. Additionally, it could fly at 85,000 feet, a record it still holds, and used an astro-inertial navigation system that relied on stars to find its position. An impressive record. The development of a supersonic jet engine was a significant challenge, as rocket-powered aircraft like the North American X-15 flowed faster than the SR-71. The challenge was to create an air-breathing jet engine that could fly at speeds slower than Mach 1, as supersonic air can cause an unstart and require engine restarting. To control airflow into the massive jet engines, a more complex inlet was needed, with a spike-shaped cone at the front of the air inlet that could be moved back and forth to control where the supersonic shock wave would enter the engine. By carefully monitoring the aircraft speed, atmospheric conditions, and engine parameters, the pilot could adjust the spike along with a series of doors located along the outer walls of the inlet. By doing this, a shock wave could actually be positioned in such a way that it would act as a speed bump of sorts and slow down the incoming air to Mach 0.6, the ideal speed for air to enter the jet engine. The result was air would enter the inlet at approximately 2,000 miles per hour, and within 20 feet, it would slow down to a speed of 600 miles per hour. Of course, this didn't always go according to plan, and unstarts still happened in the SR-71. Pilots described the unpleasant event as a violent jerk to the side of the stalled engine and continued shaking and unwelcome noises until the engine could be restarted. The result of all of this complex air inlet management was an engine that could push the SR-71 faster than any other jet aircraft. The official top speed was Mach 3.2, though occasionally pilots inadvertently flew as fast as Mach 3.5. Typical speeds during a mission would be around Mach 3. For the New York to London flight, Sullivan flew the SR-71 through an imaginary gate 80,000 feet above New York. Heading east, he flew over 3,400 miles, 
until passing through another imaginary gate over London. The trip lasted only one hour, 54 minutes, 56.4 seconds. By comparison, the Concorde typically flew from New York to London in around three hours, and a 747 makes the trip in about six hours. Of course, the SR-71 did get a bit of a running start, but it also had to slow down over the Atlantic to refuel behind a special Boeing KC-135Q tanker. After the end of the Farnborough Air Show, where the SR-71 was on display outside the United States for the first time, it set another record on the way home. This time, the spy plane flew from London to Los Angeles, a distance of approximately 5,000 miles in just three hours, 47 minutes, and 39 seconds. That flight required two refueling slowdowns as well as other speed zones when flying over major United States cities. An SR-71 also set the coast-to-coast -coast record when it flew from Los Angeles to Washington, D.C. in 64 minutes, 20 seconds in 1990. While the SR-71 was retired in the late 1990s, its legacy continues to inspire modern aviation technology. Today, drones and advanced reconnaissance aircraft owe much to the innovations pioneered by the Blackbird. The SR-71 Blackbird's record-breaking flight from New York to London remains a testament to human ingenuity and the relentless pursuit of speed and performance in aviation. What do you think about this incredible aircraft? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the Tech Insider for more amazing aviation stories, and let us know in the comments which aspect of the SR-71. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.